Hey everybody! <laughs> Welcome back to another Rosh Reviews where today we are in an Evo 10. This particular one guys, it's been tuned, there's a couple of mods on it, it's got the dual clutch. This thing is pretty interesting and today we're going to be explaining a little bit of the differences here between the GSR, the MR, and whether you should really be going for the five-speed manual or the six-speed twin clutch SST that we have in this particular one. So buckle up people and uh, let's go. All right, now before everyone gets their fanny in a twist, yes, this has a six-speed automatic. It is the twin clutch SST, as they call it. It's dual clutch for people that don't, yeah, twin clutch, get it. Uh, anyways, it's, it's not what people would expect from an Evo because all of the heritage, all of the history, it's always been a manual gearbox. And I'm a manual guy. I appreciate a good manual, but I can understand why they put this in because at the end of the day, this really would have won you races out on the dirt. And yes, it's not as engaging out here on the back road. The paddles are good and they're responsive as you would expect into a clutch, but it just, it doesn't have that communicative feel to it. And when I drove the Evo 10 GSR with the five speed manual, that one did feel a little more boosty a little more engaging, just a little more Evo if I'm being honest. But I do have to admit, if I was gonna be racing, I would be, I would definitely take this gearbox. The six speed is quicker, it just is. Now, just before we continue with this Evo 10, guys, we do have to say a huge thanks to Nextride for loaning this particular vehicle out for us today. It is for sale, guys. And uh, if you are interested, link is down below. <laughs> Yeah, this thing, it is a monster. Now the Evo 10 was the first Evo never to get a 4G63. Instead, it got a 4B11T, which was a two liter turbocharged inline four cylinder. Uh, it's my VEC. The thing made about 291 horsepower and about 270 pound feet of torque. It's getting up there, you know what I mean? For a little two liter, back in the day to be pushing about 300 horsepower, that was killing it. So, although we didn't have the 4G63 anymore and that was a God level engine, I think this was a better one. I just, I think it was the better one. I think a lot of you guys will agree with that. And you know, look, at the end of the day, the Evo 10, it, it is a special car. Now, one thing that really grinds my gears about Mitsubishi in particular, because I love the Evos, absolutely love them, is it's gone soft. Mitsubishi has gone soft and they've absolutely become just the laughing stock of the automotive industry because their cars right now are trash. Uh, like I'm just gonna say this because they are. And I'm just being honest, and Mitsubishi, you wanna chuck me a couple of press cars, maybe I'll change my mind one day, but from my experience, new Mitsubishis are garbage. Absolutely garbage. They're not making anything fun, not making anything fast, and they need to change that because you had the Evo Mitsubishi, and even back in the 90s, you had some other cool ones like the Eclipse, uh, you know, the one that Paul Walker was driving in Fast and Furious. You know what I mean? That was a cool car. You, you really lost just so many fans because at the end of the Evo 10 here, we lost it. We got nothing else to show for now. And I am actually blown away that e Mitsubishi is still in production because if it wasn't for the cheap tradies buying the Triton, no, they'd be out of business because the Triton is absolute garbage. It's only because it's cheap people buy it. Yeah, I'm, I'm on a rant here, but Mitsubishi, yeah, look at Subaru. At least Subaru is still bringing the WRX out, even though they've really gone soft with it. And keep an eye out, guys. Subscribe to the channel because I am going to be reviewing 
the all new Subaru WRX very soon in the manual form. So keep an eye for that review. I'm hoping, I'm hoping it is gonna be better than I think. Yeah, this car really does have two personalities because when you're just in drive and you know, you're kind of going through the paces, you're just going through traffic, you're not really sending it. Uh, it's jerky, you know, the, the gearbox is very mechanical, so I kind of would consider it similar to a GTR. So you can hear this thing kind of clunking around, you can feel it, it's not particularly smooth. Uh, you know, as a daily car, it, it's probably not the best really, guys, being honest. When you get this thing though, out here and you're actually pushing it to its limit, this thing absolutely changes and it just, it really, really is in its happy place just with your right foot constantly to the floor. Like it just wants to be to the floor the whole time, put it in super sport mode and like this thing just absolutely takes off. It loves to be up the top. The gears just really feel a lot snappier up the top too. Doesn't feel as clunky anymore and uh, the whole car just works better. You know, it's been designed that way. I can tell you, this is a race car. It properly is a race car when you drive this thing. Because look guys, I drive street cars, muscle cars, you know, tuned, JDM, all these different vehicles. And I can tell this has solely been designed to be a race car. And again, Mitsubishi, you fucked up because you're not making these things anymore. They're bloody awesome. You could have just kept improving this thing and instead we got crappy tritons uh hello what is going on because this thing it just handles on a dime you've got endless amounts of grip the steering is you know there's no center vagueness in this thing seats hug you so well and the higher you are up on the rpm level like obviously but this thing it just really rewards you to stay up top. You know, hanging around three, 4,000 RPM, it's, it's nothing like it. It's boring, it's lagging. Uh, it's, I don't know if, yeah, it, this thing properly feels like a legitimate rally car for the road. And to its credit, that is what this thing is. Now price, guys, this thing brand new would have set you back here in Australia, about 75 grand. And that is a lot of money. Uh, on the used market, you're looking at between 40 and 80 grand. So there's a huge variation here because obviously there's a lot of tuners that are modifying these things. Uh, you know, depending on case condition, the price is going to fluctuate. I think this one is for sale in the mid 40s at Next Ride, and you know it is a really nice example. Now. One thing you guys need to be aware of when you are going to buy one of these is they are the thirstiest two liter in the history of mankind because this thing will drink more 98 than a V8. And I'm not kidding because it's <laughs> this thing, I believe if we can check what we are averaging now, we are averaging about 17.1 liters per 100 Ks. And my old XR8, which I regularly took to the limit, that thing was only doing about 16 liters per average. So I thought that was bad. This thing really does like to drink and uh, I'm probably going to have to go to the petrol station again before I go back to next ride, unfortunately, but that is the life I chose to live. And <laughs> I gotta live with those consequences. Now guys, I'm gonna need your help in the comment section here. I'm gonna be the first to admit it because this is confusing what Mitsubishi did between all the different countries they were delivering these cars in is you generally had the GSR or the MR. Now, in Australia, these are meant to be a CJ, but you're still meant to be able to get a GSR CJ and an MR CJ, I believe, and you can get the GSR in the manual or in the dual clutch, but you cannot get the 
MR in the manual, you can only get it in a dual clutch. And I believe this car is an MR because it has the leather trimmed bucket seats. I believe the GSR only had the cloth. So I could be wrong guys, it is quite confusing and I really don't know why somebody would modify an MR if this is an MR, which I believe it is. But you know, someone has changed the wheels on this, they've changed and put coilovers in this. Um, you know, of course you're gonna tinker with the engine, which they've done, put a big exhaust cannon on it. You know, of course that's all good, fine and dandy. Uh, I would have left the stock wheels on if this was an MR because they did get 18 inch BBS that were forged and they actually look really nice. So I'm a bit confused why someone would change those. But yeah, it's the 4B11T, uh, you know, they're all the same in that manner. appreciate as well that on the gear stick here they actually if you do have it in tiptronic mode you've got the paddles but they've done it the right way here if you actually want to do it yourself with the shifter so you can push it forward to go down a gear pull it back to go up a gear that's how you do it uh, you know again this is a race car so of course they've done it right here and again I just can't understand how Mitsubishi lost its way they were so good <laughs> and the Brembo brakes really stop well. Oh, yep. It, there's that all-wheel drive kicking in again. You know that SAWC control. Uh, wow, that was crazy. And you can really feel when you push this thing in a nice corner, even on tarmac. Like you can feel that the all, you know, the advanced all wheel drive control here is actually maneuvering that power as you are really slamming that pedal on a corner because this thing kind of did go a little bit sideways and then it just kind of crab walked and floated a bit and I could just sense the wheels were doing different things independently. And yeah, you, you, that was very fast around that corner. I'm not gonna mention how quick it was for legal reasons, but. <laughs> It was quick and yeah, you can tell this thing will do that all day. So uh, this thing right here will win races. I just, it is mind blowingly quick around a corner. Alrighty guys, so we are this ready, ready to pull up on this back road and look, this thing is claimed I believe at about five seconds. It's been shooting this one uh, you know, it's got a few bolt-ons and that. So it could be quicker. Let's find out though. So we've got it in super sport mode, which is quite ridiculous. Uh, yeah, traction control is off. We're gonna reset the draggy here. And basically we just leave it in drive, hard on the brake, hard on the accelerator. Let's go. Oh, here we go. And that is 100. <laughs> uh, it's a little bit funny. This exhaust, you know, I would I would expect it to be a little bit more, la -ta -ta, you know, a little bit more insane. But, you know, it is a little two liter at the end of the day, this thing. So it's impressive nonetheless. Let's have a look at what that time was. Now, zero to 100, guys, was done in 5.5 seconds. And look, again, just on a back road here, uh, that was literally the first attempt. And five and a half seconds, you know, this thing weighs about 1.5 ton. That is pretty damn healthy, man. Uh, I gotta say, that's pretty awesome. Now I'm gonna finish the video off here today, guys. So look, a huge thanks to Nextride for loaning me this particular Evo 10. I had a blast in this thing. Uh, look, would I be getting the automatic or the manual, the MR or the GSR. Guys, I think it just comes down to what you wanna do with this thing. If you want it just for a street car, something that's fun to row gears in, engaging, get the GSR, get the manual, that's more engaging, a little bit more fun. If you actually wanna race this thing, do some track days, maybe do some rally even, I would love to do that. Uh, without a doubt, you're gonna want the twin clutch SST because 
Yeah, this, this thing just on the, the top limit, it's so quick. It is so much faster. And uh, for that reason alone, if you want to win races, get this one. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you learned something. If you did, make sure you hit that like button. Consider subscribing and we'll see you on that next video. Oh yeah. Oh Jesus, it's fast on the limit. Woo! <laughs>